Alrighty. Hello, y'all. So today we are going to be continuing on with our tier listing. This is going to be part two where we dive into some liberal arts colleges. Um, let's just jump straight into it. I don't really have anything fancy or schmancy to say. Uh, if you take a look at the spreadsheet that I presented last time, there's the tab for U.S. liberal arts colleges. Uh, I started off actually by highlighting and bolding a couple of things I wanted to point out, and I'll explain what that is. But for now, let's first start with the broader question. Uh, Jay, what is a liberal arts college? Why is it different? Why is there a difference? Um, I'd always address that with students first by asking my students to refer to the niche website. I think they give a really good breakdown of what that difference entails. Uh, liberal arts colleges, in a nutshell, they tend to be uh, more focused towards the undergraduate experience, whereas national universities, research universities tend to have a uh, focus more towards the undergrad as well as graduate school uh, experience. But if you take a read through, you know, let's just kind of read through this. Are you considering a liberal arts college or a four year university? Yada, yada, yada. Here's the main difference. One is focused on well-rounded education. The other one's focused on research. Um, there is a growing argument, actually, that liberal arts colleges are becoming more and more, especially the higher ranking ones, um, capable of connecting their students to research opportunities, at least locally. So that's less of a concern for me these days. If you're going higher in the ranks, they typically are smaller size. Absolutely. Um, you know, these schools are, are much smaller, uh, liberal arts colleges, I mean. And they tend to have, you know, classroom sizes that are 1 to 13, 1 to 15, whereas universities are, are much, much bigger just by the virtue of the fact that they host not only an undergraduate population, but also a graduate school population. Um, quick little note about the, the size. I think the first knock against national universities is that they can have lecture halls or classroom sizes that are sometimes 200, 250 students strong. Um, and that's not just a thing for public universities. I've seen some Ivy League schools where you enroll in a class or in a lecture that and the size of that lecture is 150, 200 even. Um, the way that they mitigate that, the way national universities try to address that point is that they'll have a lecture that's really big, let's say 100, 200, 250 with the professor. And then they'll have things called like discussions or classrooms where they break up the entire class into smaller groups, the 15 to 20 people. And there's a TA, a teaching assistant that will usually run those kinds of smaller discussion groups. So universities have kind of gotten, uh, uh, I guess like, a solution to the issue or the typical accusation that you know, universities tend to be too big. They tend to have classrooms that are too large. The, they'll have like a hybrid system with the lecture that's big and then the smaller discussion groups where you can go more intimately into homework assignments and, and lecture reviews. Um, anyways, emphasis on undergraduate education. Yep. Graduate PhD in professional education. Yep. Uh, more classroom discussion, larger lecture classes, typically few or no teaching assistants, use of teaching assistants. This is actually pretty interesting. Um, it's not uncommon for me to hear a student who got into a top 15 liberal arts and I email them, you know, uh, a year later, they're, they're a year into their uh, their school there at, at Williams or, or Pomona or Claremont. And they tell me stories like how they just finished eating dinner at a professor's house, right? That, that kind of thing is really un, unheard of, at least from my experience. Um, going to a national university, um, but yeah, the, there's definitely a, a more personal, intimate connection that you can have. I feel like it's um, uh, one of the key aspects of a liberal arts college. Uh, obviously, the smaller classroom sizes, less competition to attain leadership positions. I'm not sure I agree with that. There are less people you are competing with by virtue of the population size, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easier to get leadership positions. Um, national name recognition. I think this goes for more the international crowd. A lot of international students are coming to um, the U.S. to receive higher education because of the name brands, right? The, the Ivy League school, Stanford, things like that. So I can definitely agree there. More attention with faculty. Depends on the college you go to. But yeah, bigger focus on athletics. Absolutely. If you're thinking more Division One. Um, division two, they tend to be more towards national universities. A lot of division three um, 
in, in liberal arts, so I can agree with that. Sometimes described as a mini high school because gossip spreads fast. Oh dear. Uh, I guess that's true. I think it just comes down to the, the personality of the student body. Um, more anonymity on campus. That's definitely true for someone who's going to a UC school. That's, that's one of the cool things about going to a bigger school. Sometimes going to a bigger school has a lot of advantages people don't realize um, compared to going to a smaller school. Sometimes going to a smaller school has some disadvantages. Um, so uh, what I would do, uh, I created a little tab earlier. Uh, if I had to add on to this list of pros and cons, um, by the way, please feel free to check this link out. I'll, I'll provide it in the description below. But if I had to kind of give my own sense of it, given my experience working with students and getting into both, I'd say liberal arts colleges, they tend to be definitely smaller, but I, I feel like they focus more towards studying and preparing for graduate school. So it's kind of a paradox at, at first. You want to go to a research university, typically if you want to go for graduate school because graduate schools tend to value research experience. Um, but with a lot more of the liberal arts becoming more savvy about that, I feel like getting a smaller classroom environment to get the personalized attention to make sure that your academics are strong. And then at the same time, being able to go locally to do research um, has helped me to see how students who go to liberal arts colleges have sometimes an edge in getting into the next stage, which is graduate schools. Um, research universities, conversely, I think go focus more on like job markets. So I see a lot of recruiting fairs, uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies, um, like in accounting, the big four, they'll come to um, research university campuses and, and be a part of these big job fairs that they host. Um, and so as a result, I, I'd give the edge or the expectation of a student who goes to a research university to be more likely to graduate from college, undergrad, and look immediately to get employed and, and enter the job force or, or the job market. Whereas a liberal arts student, I feel, is, is focusing more towards applying for graduate school. But again, I, this is just a general trend. Uh, there's obviously a lot of exceptions to that. Is there any other difference? Um, maybe I'd want to dip into a little bit of financial aid. I feel like research universities are more likely to be not need blind, whereas liberal arts colleges have a bit more of a financial kind of, or less of a financial leeway sometimes. But again, I think that's going to be case specific. And I don't want to turn this into a financial aid type of discussion. If you want any questions answered about that, there's actually a really good resource for that. It's, I think it's called Big Futures. Let me see. It's like Big Futures. Um, yeah, Big Future College Board. And if you're interested in learning about kind of uh, financial aid um, in a nutshell, I think this would be the place to start, not, not here. Anyways. Uh, any other differences for liberal arts versus research universities? I feel like liberal arts, they tend to be, again, a lot of exception to this, but they tend to be more rural and they tend to be more towards like the, like the countryside or, or in, in, in like a little hamlet or a nook kind of vibe. Um, whereas research universities, there's a lot of more urban opportunities. And obviously that can also synergize and, and tie into the point above about job markets and, and studying focus. Um, but other than that, I feel like niche kind of is a good source to understand what the difference is. Um, I wanna be clear here for, for you guys that I'm not saying that a liberal arts college is clearly better for one thing or the other. I think that it, it really depends on each student and you got to do your own research to kind of see what personally matches with you. Um, but you know, if I had to be blunt, I think a lot of more of the international and parent expectations tend to revolve around brand naming. And, and so research universities for me has been obviously the more popular choice. Um, anyways, all right, enough comparison. Let's go into my thoughts about the tiers. Uh, I think compared to, I just said enough about the comparisons and I'm still comparing, derp. 
but I gotta say it. I gotta say it. I think in comparison, one more to national universities, liberal arts colleges are much more compacted in in their tier system. And what I mean by that is, there's a quicker shift, um, or there's less there's less tier one schools to then tier twos to then tier threes. It, it's gonna transition more quickly. There's less, um, I guess. Uh, differences for me to um, showcase because by the virtue of the fact that the list of liberal arts colleges are just much smaller um, so you're gonna see me going from tier one to tier two much more quickly uh, when I go down the ranks and that isn't to say that you should compare tier one national universities to tier one liberal arts colleges um, rather your tier one national universities are in many ways still going to be less competitive than research so for example let's say we have a, a tier one at princeton columbia harvard mit i'd argue those tier ones are going to be harder to get into still than tier one Williams, Amherst, Swarthmore, and Pomona. So uh, please don't associate the tiers between the two different types of universities, colleges to be equal. Um, yeah, I feel like I probably botched that, but I'm already halfway through. I'm gonna just keep going. Here we go. Williams, Amherst, Swarthmore, Pomona. I definitely think these are tier ones. Um, Wellesley, oh, by the way, I bolded all the all girls, all women's colleges, okay? Uh, so if it's bold, uh, these are women's colleges. Uh, if you have a question about whether a, a male can apply, um, there's a lot of YouTubing and Googling you can do. There's a particularly a Vox, V-O-X uh, website you could check out. I'm not going to go into details about that, but Wellesley, that's pretty strong as a number one choice. Um, the reds that I, I put here, fonted in red, are the service academies, military academies. Remember, these are going to come with additional requirements. Um, congressional nomination, uh, candidate fitness assessment. These are things you want to start really early. And by the way, if you're curious about when I should start for military, I'm interested in military academies, uh, what you should definitely be using as a resource is the West Point Timeline. So that would be West Point Timeline. Yeah, so if you go here, application timeline, this is a good guide to follow. It'll start as early as junior year in December, what things you have to be doing. Um, they don't have a, a nice little timeline for the others, but if it's the timeline for West Point, generally Naval and Air Force kind of follow suit. Um, yeah, so I put those in red. Uh, I am going to go ahead and straight up make all of the, the United States Naval Academy tier one West Point or U.S. United States Military Academy uh, Tier 1 and Air Force Academy Tier 1 just because there's those additional requirements. Yes, there's a lower threshold, a lower band for SAT scores because, well, Military Academy is not looking just for academically excellent students. Um, there are other kind of variables that take more weight, uh, but I would argue they are hard to get into. So I'm going to put them in Tier 1 and that's what my tiers are going to represent in my eyes are they the hardest to get into, right? Um, Bodwin, sorry for leaving you out, Bodwin. You're also number one for me. Claremont has been skyrocketing. Man, if Claremont was a stock, it would have been like Tesla in 2000, 2020, right? Uh, Claremont, I remember even like, what was it, four or five years ago? It was it was like rank 20, but now it's 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 in the top 10 and i i totally understand why My, i've sent at least one or two students um or worked with one or two students who got accepted and, and decided to attend claremont each year and they have nothing but good things to say great things to say particularly if you're interested in business um they have these like joint programs I, i'm not sure if i want to officially call them that because they're official terms that i might be hitting upon but you can take classes at the other conglomerates, uh, colleges, uh, Pomona, Harvey Mudd, um, uh, Pitzer. Um, so Claremont, I think, oh, I'm so tempted. I want to give that like a 1.5, but 
I am going to continue on with turning that into a 2, I believe. I have to make a cut somewhere. So I think we'll go with Claremont continuing on in towards the second tier, all the way down. Barnard, that's really hard to get into. Uh, I think like most of these, like Wellesley, Barnard, Barnard being the, the Columbia sister school, super popular. Oh, is it as popular as Wellesley? I'm, I'm actually gonna make Barnard um, rank one or tier one as well. Smith to me, I think is where I'd begin the all women's in the tier two category. Um, continuing with Colby, by the way. Colby's good, Colgate in New York is good. I think Wesleyan. Oh man, I'm looking also at how I'm just botching the, the percentages versus the SAT. Um, again, bear in mind, like the, the, the acceptance rate, it's not even fully accurate. I pulled most of this from US News. Um, so it could be outdated data. And in addition to that, you remember statistics, they're, they're, they're always gonna be skewed in some way. Like for example, just the popularity of, of the school can, can really just suppress the, the number. Um, but I'm basing it off of my experience helping with students. Like it is, for example, is Wesleyan a harder school to get into than Colgate? Um, oof. Honestly, that's tough for me because Vassar is also a really good school. Bates is a great school. Colorado is a great school. Harvey Mudd being at number 28, that's atrocious. That's they they doing you dirty, Harvey Mudd. I, I'm going to I'm going to stand up for you guys. Harvey Mudd to me is like the MIT of liberal arts colleges. It's an amazing school. Um, so I'm going to keep that at one. So right away you could tell that like, you know, the, the rankings is just, it's making it messy for me. Um, I'm gonna have to stick to my guns. Let's go with Wesleyan for me in the two category, Richmond in three, Vassar back to two, Bates, Colorado back to two, and then I think McAllister takes me back to three. Soka. I might have to give it a, a three four. I might have to give it a three four, guys. Hmm. Uh, Bryn Mawr. Let's let's deal with the the all women's colleges here. We got three for these. Um, Scripps to me is a three. Um, Mount Holyoke. Yeah, I'm gonna put that as a four. Soka, I'm gonna put as a four. Um, oh man. I did not realize I would be struggling this much towards the end here. Pitzer. Pitzer's one of those conglomerates in California, along with uh, Claremont McKenna. Um, definitely a three to me. And then from there, I think I'm just going to go down the list as fours. <sighs> Occidental, Los Angeles. This, this school, by the way, gets a lot of, um, it gets a lot of, I guess, like, looks um because the story goes that this is where um barack obama uh, started before he i think he either graduated or transferred over but um i want to give it a three for occidental but i think i'm going to keep these all in the four and then from here i'm just gonna have to fire sell trinity trinity is so low for the rankings so interesting interesting i'm gonna have to go with fours connecticut is good too okay so I, if i had to air my, my out, air out my thoughts i think at this point i'm i'm going off of kind of eyeballing the uh, sat band and the acceptance rate and again that's not that's not a means i'll say all but i gotta get through this video i gotta get through, through this list somehow so um the the true if i had to just give you a hot take on this i think 
for most of the people that I think are watching this, if you reach a point where you kind of think about these four or five options, like rank tier tier four or five, like, man, Counselor J's video doesn't even clarify the four or fives. I might just stop you there and say, have you considered the fact that you might be paying 60, 70 grand a year to go to these schools? And at that point, it might be better to just to go to a community college, if, especially if you're a California resident and see if you can maybe, you know, um, try to clutch it with one year of good grades and, and try to transfer. Um, don't get me wrong, there are, there are pros and cons to that too, right? But I hope that I can get away with simplifying it that way. Yeah, I think that's going to be my tears. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to come back to this after I, 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 I upload this video and, 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 and hit myself in the head and say, ah, oh, I should have made this exception or that. But for now, um, I'm, I'm going to go with my guts here. But yeah, these are the liberal arts tiers. Um, again, uh, I, I think that liberal arts colleges as a whole are underrated. I think that they deserve a lot more attention. Um, but as I was mentioning earlier, as I was fumbling to mention earlier, the tiers, they kind of, <laughs> the structure of the tiers kind of dissipate rather quickly. Uh, and they, they change rather quickly, right? So we're going from tier one to tier five within a matter of just uh, 50 ranks. Whereas liberal arts colleges, you had over 130, or 100 and, over 100 ranks that we had to go through. Uh, and they tend to be a little bit more linear for me. Um, but yeah, um, I hope that this was helpful for you when uh, thinking about liberal arts colleges. I think that more and more students and parents need to be open to the idea. Um, I'll, I'll, for example, if I had a student who got accepted to, let's say, I don't know, what's a typical scenario? Let's say a, a decent level student got accepted to UC San Diego or UC Irvine. Right, or NYU, and they were lucky enough to also get accepted to Claremont McKenna. If you put aside financial and all other things like that, I think Claremont McKenna would be a very, very compelling choice for me if, I, if that was the set of colleges I was given. Um, and so this will later lead to you know, um, uh, how you construct a college list because it's not like you can apply to all 15 of these and then all 50 uh, of, of the national research universities. Granted, you know what, that, that might be an incorrect statement. You probably can. You can leverage Common App, UC App, Coalition, and Universal, but it would be, it would be insane to do so. Um, I'm going to be moving on next to my uh, How to Build a College List video. That's something I want to work on because uh, I have a lot of juniors right now that are kind of getting the initial kind of look into colleges, which is something you should all be doing at this point. Like, if you're a junior right now, you should at least be peeking into some of these college options because you're going to be spending four years of your life potentially um, at, at these places. So uh, getting a head peek look, using YouTube to do day in the life of, it's usually something I'm, I'm going to be encouraging in juniors right now. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to stick with that. I will include the links like niche to the bottom of the description. And as always, thank you guys for spending the time with me. I hope this was helpful.